Jeremiah 48 Concerning Moab Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Woe to Nebo, for it is laid waste. Kiriathaim is put to shame, it is taken. The fortress is put to shame and broken down. The renown of Moab is no more. In Heshbon they plan disaster against her. Come, let us cut her off from being a nation. You also, O madmen, shall be brought to silence. The sword shall pursue you. A voice, a cry from Horanaim. Desolation and great destruction. Moab is destroyed. Her little ones have made a cry. For at the ascent of Luhith they go up weeping. For at the descent of Huraneum they have heard the distressed cry of destruction. Flee! Save yourselves! You will be like a juniper in the desert. For because you trusted in your works and your treasures, you also shall be taken. And Kima shall go into exile with his priests and his officials. The destroyer shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape. The valley shall perish and the plain shall be destroyed as the Lord has spoken. Give wings to Moab, for she would fly away. Her cities shall become a desolation with no inhabitant in them. Cursed is he who does the work of the Lord with slackness, and cursed is he who keeps back his sword from bloodshed. Moab has been at ease from his youth and has settled on his dregs. He has not been emptied from vessel to vessel, nor has he gone into exile. So his taste remains in him, and his scent is not changed. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I shall send to him pourers who will pour him, and empty his vessels and break his jars in pieces. Then Moab shall be ashamed of Chemosh, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence. How do you say, we are heroes and mighty men of war? The destroyer of Moab and his cities has come up, and the choicest of his young men have gone down to slaughter, declares the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. The calamity of Moab is near at hand, and his affliction hastens swiftly. Grieve for him, all you who are around him, and all who know his name. Say, how the mighty scepter is broken, the glorious staff. Come down from your glory and sit on the parched ground, O inhabitant of Divon. For the destroyer of Moab has come up against you. He has destroyed your strongholds. Stand by the way and watch, O inhabitant of Aurora. Ask him who flees and her who escapes. Say, what has happened? Moab is put to shame, for it is broken. Wail and cry, tell it beside the Arnon, that Moab is laid waste. Judgment has come upon the tableland, upon Holon and Jaza and Mephaeth, and Dibon and Nebo and Beth Diblatham and Kiriatham and Beth Gamel and Beth Mian and Kiriath and Basra and all the cities of the land of Moab far and near. The horn of Moab is cut off, and his arm is broken, declares the Lord. Make him drunk, because he magnified himself against the Lord, so that Moab shall wallow in his vomit, and he too shall be held in derision. Was not Israel a derision to you? Was he found among thieves, that whenever you spoke of him you wagged your head? Leave the cities, and dwell in the rock, O inhabitants of Moab. Be like the dove that nests in the sides of the mouth of a gorge. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud of his loftiness, his pride, and his arrogance and the haughtiness of his heart. I know his insolence, declares the Lord. His boasts are false, his deeds are false. Therefore I wail for Moab, I cry out for all Moab, for the men of kir I mourn. More than for Jazer I weep for you, O vine of Sibma. Your branches passed over the sea, reached to the sea of Jazer. On your summer fruits and your grapes the destroyer has fallen. Gladness and joy have been taken away from the fruitful land of Moab. I have made the wine cease from the wine presses. 
No one treads them with shouts of joy. The shouting is not the shout of joy. From the outcry at Heshbon, even to Eliela, as far as Jahaz, they utter their voice. From Zor to Horanaim and Iglas Shalishia, for the waters of Nimrim also have become desolate. And I will bring to an end in Moab, declares the Lord, him who offers sacrifice in the high place and makes offerings to his God. Therefore my heart moans for Moab like a flute, and my heart moans like a flute for the men of Kirharaseth. Therefore the riches they gained have perished. For every head is shaved and every beard cut off. On all the hands are gashes and around the waist is sackcloth. On all the housetops of Moab and in the squares there is nothing but lamentation, for I have broken Moab like a vessel for which no one cares, declares the Lord. How it is broken! How they wail! How Moab has turned his back in shame! So Moab has become a derision and a horror to all that are around him. For thus says the Lord, Behold, one shall fly swiftly like an eagle and spread his wings against Moab. The city shall be taken and the stronghold seized. The heart of the warriors of Moab shall be in that day like the heart of a woman in her birth pains. Moab shall be destroyed and be no longer a people because he magnified himself against the Lord. Terror, pit, and snare are before you, O inhabitant of Moab, declares the Lord. He who flees from the terror shall fall into the pit, and he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For I will bring these things upon Moab, the year of their punishment, declares the Lord. In the shadow of Heshbon, fugitives stop without strength, for fire came out from Heshbon, flame from the house of Sion. It has destroyed the forehead of Moab, the crown of the sons of Tumult. Woe to you, O Moab! The people of Chemosh are undone, for your sons have been taken captive and your daughters into captivity. Yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab in the latter days, declares the Lord. Thus far is the judgment on Moab. Jeremiah 49 Concerning the Ammonites Thus says the Lord, Has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? Why then has Milcom dispossessed Gad and his people settled in its cities? Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will cause the battle cry to be heard against Rabbah of the Ammonites. It shall become a desolate mound, and its villages shall be burned with fire. Then Israel shall dispossess those who dispossessed him, says the Lord. Wail, O Heshbon, for Ai is laid waste. Cry out, O daughters of Rabbah. Put on sackcloth, lament, and run to and fro among the hedges. For Milcom shall go into exile with his priests and his officials. Why do you boast of your valleys, O faithless daughter who trusted in her treasures, saying, Who will come against me? Behold, I will bring terror upon you, declares the Lord God of hosts, from all who are around you, and you shall be driven out, every man straight before him, with none to gather the fugitives. But afterward I will restore the fortunes of the Ammonites, declares the Lord. Concerning Edom Thus says the Lord of hosts, Is wisdom no more in Teman? Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom vanished? Flee! Turn back, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time when I punish him. If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? If thieves came by night, would they not destroy only enough for themselves? But I have stripped Esau bare, I have uncovered his hiding places, and he is not able to conceal himself. His children are destroyed, and his brothers and his neighbors, and he is no more. Leave your fatherless children. I will keep them alive, and let your widows trust in me. For thus says the Lord, 
If those who did not deserve to drink the cup must drink it, will you go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, but you must drink. For I have sworn by myself, declares the Lord, that Basra shall become a horror, a taunt, a waste, and a curse, and all her cities shall be perpetual wastes. I have heard a message from the Lord, and an envoy has been sent among the nations. Gather yourselves together, and come against her, and rise up for battle. For behold, I will make you small among the nations, despised among mankind. The horror you inspire has deceived you, and the pride of your heart, you who live in the clefts of the rock, who hold the height of the hill. Though you make your nest as high as the eagles, I will bring you down from there, declares the Lord. Edom shall become a horror. Everyone who passes by it will be horrified and will hiss because of all its disasters. As when Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring cities were overthrown, says the Lord, no man shall dwell there, no man shall sojourn in her. Behold, like a lion coming up from the jungle of the Jordan against a perennial pasture, I will suddenly make him run away from her, and I will appoint over her whomever I choose. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? Therefore hear the plan that the Lord has made against Edom, and the purposes that he has formed against the inhabitants of Teman. Even the little ones of the flock shall be dragged away. Surely their fold shall be appalled at their fate. At the sound of their fall the earth shall tremble. The sound of their cry shall be heard at the Red Sea. Behold, one shall mount up and fly swiftly like an eagle, and spread his wings against Basra. And the heart of the warriors of Edom shall be in that day like the heart of a woman in her birth pains. Concerning Damascus Hamath and Arpad are confounded, for they have heard bad news. They melt in fear. They are troubled like the sea that cannot be quiet. Damascus has become feeble. She turned to flee, and panic seized her. Anguish and sorrows have taken hold of her, as of a woman in labor. How is the famous city not forsaken, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her squares, and all her soldiers shall be destroyed in that day, declares the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall devour the strongholds of Ben-Hadad. Concerning Kedar and the kingdoms of Hazor, that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon struck down, thus says the Lord, Rise up, advance against Kedar, destroy the people of the east. Their tents and their flocks shall be taken, their curtains and all their goods. Their camels shall be led away from them, and men shall cry to them, Terror on every side! Flee, wander far away, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Hazor, declares the Lord. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has made a plan against you and formed a purpose against you. Rise up, advance against a nation at ease, that dwells securely, declares the Lord, that has no gates or bars, that dwells alone. Their camels shall become plunder, their herds of livestock a spoil. I will scatter to every wind those who cut the corners of their hair, and I will bring their calamity from every side of them, declares the Lord. Hazor shall become a haunt of jackals, an everlasting waste. No man shall dwell there, no man shall sojourn in her. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning Elam, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the mainstay of their might, and I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them to all those winds, and there shall be no nation to which those driven out of Elam shall not come. I will terrify Elam before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them. My fierce anger declares the Lord. I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them, and I will set my throne in Elam and destroy their king and officials, declares the Lord. But in the latter days... I will restore the fortunes of Elam, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 50 
the word that the Lord spoke concerning Babylon, concerning the land of the Chaldeans, by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare among the nations and proclaim. Set up a banner and proclaim. Conceal it not and say, Babylon is taken. Bel is put to shame. Merodach is dismayed. Her images are put to shame. Her idols are dismayed. For out of the north a nation has come up against her, which shall make her land a desolation, and none shall dwell in it. Both man and beast shall flee away. In those days and in that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah shall come together, weeping as they come, and they shall seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion, with faces turned toward it, saying, Come! Let us join ourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. From mountain to hill they have gone. They have forgotten their fold. All who found them have devoured them, and their enemies have said, We are not guilty, for they have sinned against the Lord their habitation of righteousness, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Flee from the midst of Babylon, and go out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be as male goats before the flock. For behold, I am stirring up and bringing against Babylon a gathering of great nations from the north country, and they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be taken. Their arrows are like a skilled warrior who does not return empty-handed, Chaldea shall be plundered. All who plunder her shall be sated, declares the Lord. Though you rejoice, though you exult, O plunderers of my heritage, though you frolic like a heifer in the pasture and neigh like stallions, your mother shall be utterly shamed, and she who bore you shall be disgraced. Behold, she shall be the last of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, she shall not be inhabited, but shall be an utter desolation. Everyone who passes by Babylon shall be appalled and hiss because of all her wounds. Set yourselves in array against Babylon all around, all you who bend the bow. Shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Raise a shout against her all around. She has surrendered. Her bulwarks have fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For this is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done. Cut off from Babylon the sower and the one who handles the sickle in time of harvest. Because of the sword of the oppressor, every one shall turn to his own people and every one shall flee to his own land. Israel is a hunted sheep driven away by lions. First, the king of Assyria devoured him, and now at last Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has gnawed his bones. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing punishment on the king of Babylon and his land, as I punish the king of Assyria. I will restore Israel to his pasture, and he shall feed on Carmel and in Bashan, and his desire shall be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and in Gilead. In those days, and in that time, declares the Lord, iniquity shall be sought in Israel, and there shall be none, and sin in Judah, and none shall be found, for I will pardon those whom I leave as a remnant. Go up against the land of Merathaim, and against the inhabitants of Pekod. Kill and devote them to destruction, declares the Lord and do all that I have commanded you. The noise of battle is in the land, and great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth is cut down and broken! How Babylon has become a horror among the nations! I set a snare for you, and you were taken, O Babylon, and you did not know it. You were found and caught because you opposed the Lord. The Lord has opened his armory and brought out the weapons of his wrath. For the Lord God of hosts has a work to do in the land of the Chaldeans. Come against her from every quarter. Open her granaries. 
pile her up like heaps of grain and devote her to destruction. Let nothing be left of her. Kill all her bulls. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe to them, for their day has come, the time of their punishment. A voice. They flee and escape from the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, vengeance for his temple. Summon archers against Babylon, all those who bend the bow, and camp around her. Let no one escape. Repay her according to her deeds. Do to her according to all that she has done. For she has proudly defied the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Therefore her young men shall fall in her squares, and all her soldiers shall be destroyed on that day, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O proud one, declares the Lord God of hosts. For your day has come, the time when I will punish you. The proud one shall stumble and fall, with none to raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it will devour all that is around him. Thus says the Lord of hosts, The people of Israel are oppressed, and the people of Judah with them. All who took them captive have held them fast. They refuse to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He will surely plead their cause, that he may give rest to the earth, but unrest to the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword against the Chaldeans, declares the Lord, and against the inhabitants of Babylon, and against her officials and her wise men. A sword against the diviners, that they may become fools. A sword against her warriors, that they may be destroyed. A sword against her horses, and against her chariots, and against all the foreign troops in her midst, that they may become women. A sword against all her treasures, that they may be plundered. A drought against her waters, that they may be dried up. For it is a land of images, and they are mad over idols. Therefore, wild beasts shall dwell with hyenas in Babylon, and ostriches shall dwell in her. She shall never again have people, nor be inhabited for all generations. As when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring cities, declares the Lord, so no man shall dwell there, and no son of man shall sojourn in her. Behold, a people comes from the north, a mighty nation, and many kings are stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They lay hold of bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. The sound of them is like the roaring of the sea. They ride on horses, arrayed as a man for battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon heard the report of them. And his hands fell helpless. Anguish seized him, pain as of a woman in labor. Behold, like a lion coming up from the thicket of the Jordan against a perennial pasture, I will suddenly make them run away from her, and I will appoint over her whomever I choose. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? Therefore hear the plan that the Lord has made against Babylon, and the purposes that he has formed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the little ones of their flock shall be dragged away. Surely their folds shall be appalled at their fate. At the sound of the capture of Babylon, the earth shall tremble, and her cry shall be heard among the nations. Jeremiah 51 Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will stir up the spirit of a destroyer against Babylon, against the inhabitants of Lebkamai, and I will send to Babylon winnowers, and they shall winnow her, and they shall empty her land when they come against her from every side on the day of trouble. Let not the archer bend his bow, and let him not stand up in his armor. Spare not her young men, devote to destruction all her army, they shall fall down slain in the land of the Chaldeans and wounded in her streets. For Israel and Judah have not been forsaken by their God, the Lord of hosts. But the land of the Chaldeans is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Flee from the midst of Babylon. Let everyone save his life. 
Be not cut off in her punishment, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance, the repayment he is rendering her. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand, making all the earth drunken. The nations drank of her wine, therefore the nations went mad. Suddenly Babylon has fallen and been broken. Wail for her, take balm for her pain, perhaps she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed. Forsake her, and let us go each to his own country. For her judgment has reached up to heaven and has been lifted up even to the skies. The Lord has brought about our vindication. Come, let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Sharpen the arrows. Take up the shields. The Lord has stirred up the spirit of the kings of the Medes because his purpose concerning Babylon is to destroy it. For that is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. Set up a standard against the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up watchmen. Prepare the ambushes, for the Lord has both planned and done what he spoke concerning the inhabitants of Babylon. O oh, you who dwell by many waters, rich in treasures, your end has come. The thread of your life is cut. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, Surely I will fill you with men as many as locusts, and they shall raise the shout of victory over you. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he makes the mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and he brings forth the wind from his storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his images are false, and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. At the time of their punishment they shall perish. Not like these is he who is the portion of Jacob, for he is the one who formed all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are my hammer and weapon of war. With you I break nations in pieces. With you I destroy kingdoms. With you I break in pieces the horse and his rider. With you I break in pieces the chariot and the charioteer. With you I break in pieces man and woman. With you I break in pieces the old man and the youth. With you I break in pieces the young man and the young woman. With you I break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you I break in pieces the farmer and his team. With you I break in pieces governors and commanders. I will repay Babylon and all the inhabitants of Chaldea before your very eyes for all the evil that they have done in Zion, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain, declares the Lord, which destroys the whole earth. I will stretch out my hand against you and roll you down from the crags and make you a burnt mountain. No stone shall be taken from you for a corner, and no stone for a foundation, but you shall be a perpetual waste, declares the Lord. Set up a standard on the earth. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations for war against her. Summon against her the kingdoms, Ararat, Minai, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a marshal against her. Bring up horses like bristling locusts. Prepare the nations for war against her, the kings of the Medes with their governors and deputies, and every land under their dominion. The land trembles and writhes in pain, for the Lord's purposes against Babylon stand to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. The warriors of Babylon have ceased fighting. They remain in their strongholds. Their strength has failed. They have become women. Her dwellings are on fire, her bars are broken. One runner runs to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to tell the king of Babylon that his city is taken on every side. The fords have been seized, the marshes are burned with fire, and the soldiers are in panic. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, The daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor at the time when it is trodden, yet a little while 
and the time of her harvest will come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. He has swallowed me like a monster. He has filled his stomach with my delicacies. He has rinsed me out. The violence done to me and to my kinsmen be upon Babylon, let the inhabitant of Zion say. My blood be upon the inhabitants of Chaldea, let Jerusalem say. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will plead your cause and take vengeance for you. I will dry up her sea and make her fountain dry, and Babylon shall become a heap of ruins, the haunt of jackals, a horror and a hissing without inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions, they shall growl like lions' cubs. While they are inflamed, I will prepare them a feast and make them drunk, that they may become merry. Then sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, declares the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams and male goats. How Babylon is taken, the praise of the whole earth seized! How Babylon has become a horror among the nations! The sea has come up on Babylon. She is covered with its tumultuous waves. Her cities have become a horror, a land of drought and a desert, a land in which no one dwells and through which no son of man passes. And I will punish Bel in Babylon and take out of his mouth what he has swallowed. The nations shall no longer flow to him. The wall of Babylon has fallen. Go out of the midst of her, my people. Let everyone save his life from the fierce anger of the Lord. Let not your heart faint, and be not fearful at the report heard in the land. When a report comes in one year, and afterward a report in another year, and violence is in the land, and ruler is against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days are coming when I will punish the images of Babylon. Her whole land shall be put to shame, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is in them shall sing for joy over Babylon, for the destroyer shall come against them out of the north, declares the Lord. Babylon must fall for the slain of Israel, just as for Babylon have fallen the slain of all the earth. You who have escaped from the sword, go, do not stand still. Remember the Lord from far away, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are put to shame, for we have heard reproach. Dishonor has covered our face, for foreigners have come into the holy places of the Lord's house. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will execute judgment upon her images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify her strong height, yet destroyers would come from me against her, declares the Lord. A voice, a cry from Babylon, the noise of great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. For the Lord is laying Babylon waste and stilling her mighty voice. Their waves roar like many waters, the noise of their voice is raised, for a destroyer has come upon her, upon Babylon. Her warriors are taken, their bows are broken in pieces, for the Lord is a God of recompense. He will surely repay. I will make drunk her officials and her wise men, her governors, her commanders, and her warriors. They shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, declares the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, The broad wall of Babylon shall be leveled to the ground, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. The peoples labor for nothing, and the nations weary themselves only for fire. The word that Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah the son of Neriah, son of Messiah, when he went with Zedekiah king of Judah to Babylon, in the fourth year of his reign. Sariah was the quartermaster. Jeremiah wrote in a book all the disaster that should come upon Babylon, all these words that are written concerning Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When you come to Babylon, see that you read all these words and say, O Lord, you have said concerning this place that you will cut it off, so that nothing shall dwell in it, neither man nor beast, and it shall be desolate forever. 
When you finish reading this book, tie a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates and say, Thus shall Babylon sink to rise no more because of the disaster that I am bringing upon her, and they shall become exhausted. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 52 Zedekiah was twenty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, things came to the point in Jerusalem and Judah that he cast them out from his presence. And Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And they built siege works all around it. So the city was besieged till the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine was so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then a breach was made in the city, and all the men of war fled and went out from the city by night by the way of a gate between the two walls, by the king's garden, while the Chaldeans were around the city. And they went in the direction of the Arabah. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And all his army was scattered from him. Then they captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah in the land of Hamath. And he passed sentence on him. The king of Babylon slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and also slaughtered all the officials of Judah at Riblah. He put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him in chains, and the king of Babylon took him to Babylon and put him in prison till the day of his death. In the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, that was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, who served the king of Babylon, entered Jerusalem. And he burned the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every great house he burned down. And all the army of the Chaldeans, who were with the captain of the guard, broke down all the walls around Jerusalem. And Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive some of the poorest of the people, and the rest of the people who were left in the city and the deserters who had deserted to the king of Babylon, together with the rest of the artisans. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left some of the poorest of the land to be vine dressers and plowmen. And the pillars of bronze that were in the house of the Lord, and the stands and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried all the bronze to Babylon. And they took away the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the basins and the dishes for incense and all the vessels of bronze used in the temple service. Also the small bowls and the fire pans and the basins and the pots and the lampstands and the dishes for incense and the bowls for drink offerings. What was of gold the captain of the guard took away as gold and what was of silver as silver. As for the two pillars, the one sea, the twelve bronze bulls that were under the sea, and the stands which Solomon the king had made for the house of the Lord, the bronze of all these things was beyond weight. As for the pillars, the height of the one pillar was eighteen cubits, its circumference was twelve cubits, and its thickness was four fingers, and it was hollow. On it was a capital of bronze. The height of the one capital was five cubits. A network and pomegranates, all of bronze, were around the capital. And the second pillar had the same with pomegranates. There were ninety-six pomegranates on the sides. All the pomegranates were a hundred upon the network all around. And the captain of the guard took Sariah the chief priest, and Zephaniah the second priest, and the three keepers of the threshold. And from the city he took an officer who had been in command of the men of war, and seven men of the king's council who were found in the city, and the secretary of the commander of the army, who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land, who were found in the midst of the city. 
and Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And the king of Babylon struck them down and put them to death at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Judah was taken into exile out of its land. This is the number of the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive. In the seventh year, 3,023 Judeans. In the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem 832 persons. In the twenty-third year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the Judeans 745 persons. All the persons were 4,600. And in the thirty-seventh year of the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the twenty-fifth day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he became king, graciously freed Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him, and gave him a seat above the seats of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim put off his prison garments, and every day of his life he dined regularly at the king's table. And for his allowance, a regular allowance was given him by the king according to his daily need, until the day of his death, as long as he lived. Lamentations Lamentations 1 How lonely sits the city that was full of people! How like a widow has she become, she who was great among the nations! She who was a princess among the provinces has become a slave! She weeps bitterly in the night, with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile because of affliction and hard servitude. She dwells now among the nations, but finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for none come to the festival. All her gates are desolate, her priests groan, her virgins have been afflicted, and she herself suffers bitterly. Her foes have become the head, her enemies prosper, because the Lord has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. From the daughter of Zion all her majesty has departed, her princes have become like deer that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her affliction and wandering all the precious things that were hers from days of old. When her people fell into the hand of the foe and there was none to help her, her foes gloated over her. They mocked at her downfall. Jerusalem sinned grievously. Therefore she became filthy. All who honored her despise her, for they have seen her nakedness. She herself groans and turns her face away. Her uncleanness was in her skirts. She took no thought of her future. Therefore her fall is terrible. She has no comforter. O oh Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. The enemy has stretched out his hands over all her precious things, for she has seen the nations enter her sanctuary, those whom you forbade to enter your congregation. All her people groan as they search for bread. They trade their treasures for food to revive their strength. Look, O Lord, and see, for I am despised. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. From on high he sent fire. Into my bones he made it descend. He spread a net for my feet. He turned me back. He has left me stunned, faint all the day long. 
my transgressions were bound into a yoke. By his hand they were fastened together. They were set upon my neck. He caused my strength to fail. The Lord gave me into the hands of those whom I cannot withstand. The Lord rejected all my mighty men in my midst. He summoned an assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord has trodden as in a winepress the virgin daughter of Judah. For these things I weep. My eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me. One to revive my spirit, my children are desolate, for the enemy has prevailed. Zion stretches out her hands, but there is none to comfort her. The Lord has commanded against Jacob that his neighbors should be his foes. Jerusalem has become a filthy thing among them. The Lord is in the right, for I have rebelled against his word. But hear all you peoples, and see my suffering. My young women and my young men have gone into captivity. I called to my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and elders perished in the city while they sought food to revive their strength. Look, O Lord, for I am in distress. My stomach churns. My heart is wrung within me, because I have been very rebellious. In the street the sword bereaves. In the house it is like death. They heard my groaning, yet there is no one to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble, and they are glad that you have done it. You have brought the day you announced. Now let them be as I am. Let all their evil doing come before you, and deal with them as you have dealt with me because of all my transgressions. For my groans are many, and my heart is faint.